Welcome to Nostalgic Trip Down Memory Lane to revisit the NVIDIA GeForce GT640, a graphics card that once occupied the mid-range segment and catered to budget-conscious gamers and multimedia enthusiasts. Let's assess its relevance in an era of increasingly demanding graphics requirements. Let's dive in and see if the GT640 can still hold its ground in 2023. Released back in 2012, the GT640 boasted the power-efficient Kepler architecture and aimed to strike a balance between affordability and performance. Kepler was NVIDIA's first microarchitecture to focus on energy efficiency. Even if one is not familiar with the specific cards, one can get an idea of where the model is positioned from the name of the card. The more basic cards in NVIDIA portfolio are GT cards and the more powerful GTX. And of course, the higher the number, the more powerful the card is. NVIDIA released several variants of the GT640 to cater to different market segments and manufacturer customizations, or rather to clear stock of old chips and confuse the user. Most of them were for OEM needs, but still a big mess of different specs. Different count of CUDA cores, clock speeds, memory interface width and memory bandwidth. The card in this video is from ASUS, in this variant, it has Kepler GK107 graphics processor, 2GB of DDR3 memory, 384 CUDA cores, 128-bit bus width, 900MHz GPU clock, and 890MHz memory. The maximum graphics card power is 65W, so the card does not need external power. The PCI Express connector on the motherboard, in which the video card is placed, can provide a maximum of 75 watts of power. The card supports DirectX 12, but the feature level is only 11. Although the card is so old, it supports NVENC first generation. NVIDIA NVENC, or short for NVIDIA Encoder, performs video encoding, offloading this compute-intensive task from the CPU to a dedicated part of the GPU. The current generation is 8th gen found in Ada Lovelace GPUs. But let's focus on the games. Can we play something towards the middle of 2023? As it became clear earlier, the GT640 is not even a GTX card, and it's more than a decade old. Gaming with 720p resolution shouldn't be a problem, but what about something more? 1080p to be precise. Without talking optimistic nonsense, the truth is that it's a bit challenging. For example, the benchmark in Shadow of the Tomb Raider runs with 10 FPS at lowest quality preset, and the game is from 2018. But what if we try with a lighter and more current title like Fall Guys? Depending on the level, the FPS is between 20 and 30 with medium settings preset. But if the quality is reduced to low, FPS goes up to 40, which I think is enough for this type of game. In Fortnite, the performance mode is a big advantage. The video quality is not pretty, but the average FPS is around 75. Some people would prefer more, but it will certainly be enough for others. GTA 5 is more CPU demanding game and with GT 640 and normal preset the FPS is around 45. You make me Until the end of the video you can see footage from several more games. 
Older titles like Team Fortress 2 and CSGO are okay, but newer like Apex and PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds are not doing well. Or rather, the card is not doing well. If you're interested in this graphics card on the second hand market, I'd probably pay a bit more for something more powerful. Perhaps the differences in terms of money will be small. Spike, this is us. It's all you, little homie. Crash hit him. for more? Let's go that way. Backpack here. Level three. Hostile right here. 